It's a beautiful car. It's an MG. MG Magnet from 1955. Well, now we're going off in the Kent countryside. Um, in your prime, if I can put it that way, you were a saloon car rally driver. Correct. I started out circuit racing in a Mini uh, in the very early 1970s. It was a, a characteristic of driving at the time that you would regularly have to uh, clean the windscreen because it was becoming so completely caked with, uh, with squashed insects. If you're of a certain age, you'll remember the great British summer getaway of old. The long drive, followed by wiping all the dead insects and smeared blood from your number plate and windscreen. Are those days gone forever? Or is it that modern cars are more aerodynamic, so catching fewer bugs? Last summer, Kent Wildlife Trust put this windscreen phenomenon to the test. They sent out a fleet of both vintage and modern cars to measure the number of dead insects on number plates. They found the age of cars made absolutely no difference. They've been applying some science to this, and you took part in an actual survey. How did that work? Absolutely, yes. The fronts of the cars are cleaned and checked and then at the end of the event they would count the number of insects squashed. How would the windscreen contrast with the old windscreen days of rallying? There would be hardly anything on it. Their report, published today, has been seen exclusively by this programme. They compared their findings to a similar study by the RSPB in 2004 and the results show an alarming drop of 50% fewer insect splats over just 15 years. Our data that we've collected here in Kent mirrors the data in other studies for insect decline and the consequences of that are catastrophic. It is very rare to hear a naturalist use the word catastrophic. Insects form the basis of many, many food webs. They're really the foundation of life on Earth. Three quarters of crops are pollinated by insects. Without insects, life on Earth just couldn't exist. Many international studies are showing a similar sharp decline of our insects. Intensive agriculture and our over-reliance on pesticides being largely responsible. We now grow these enormous monocultures of crops that are treated over and over again with pesticides. On average, each field is treated about 17 times a year, so 17 different pesticide applications, which is a figure that's twice as high as it was just 25 years ago. If we were to come back in July and go and stand in the middle of this field, it would be silent. There wouldn't be any butterflies or bumblebees buzzing around because there's nothing there for them. They can't survive. And so that's really at the heart of why insects have, have, have declined so much. And I think it's a real tragedy. At Canvey Wick, they're trying to reverse the decline. It's the UK's first bug nature reserve and is flourishing with over 1,300 invertebrate species. In the summer, this would be full of wildflowers as well as grasses, um, which would be buzzing with life, buzzing with uh, bees and butterflies and beetles. The rate of loss of insects is much higher than other wildlife, such as mammals and birds, up to eight times higher. Um, sites such as this, like Canvey Wick, which are really biodiverse and really important sites for insects, we cannot afford to lose. We've got to protect them. We need to look at restoring habitats. We need to look at connecting habitats, not just in our countryside, but in our urban areas as well. We need better connectivity across the landscape, linking it up. With insects in decline, so too are many animals which rely upon them for food. Derek has been striving to preserve one of Britain's endangered species, the dormouse. The amazing thing about you is that we can even explore the effect on the food chain because you monitor dormice. We've had 50 boxes in the woodland for 10 years now that we've been monitoring uh, every month through February till November. The dormice will use the boxes when they come out of hibernation to breed. If it's anything like last year, in these woods, few will turn up at all. So now, let's look at the numbers. 10 years ago, roughly how many would be? On, a, on an a, a average, I would say around 50 to 60 dormice in a season 
in our original 50 boxes. Um, and over, this year? Uh, 2019 we saw 10. But the numbers you're talking about are so dramatic. Absolutely. I mean, there are fewer insects that could be affecting the number of dormice. It's definitely part of their diet and there are far fewer insects around which is going to affect their ability to put on weight in order to get into a condition that, where they can breed. In a world with glaciers melting and devastating wildfires, it's easy to overlook this silent decline of our insects. But we ignore it at our peril. As humans, we cannot survive without them. The scientists talk about the sixth mass extinction event, that right now species are going extinct faster than they have done for 65 million years since the dinosaurs were wiped out by a meteor. But this time round, it's down to us. This kind of quiet decline of our insects is a catastrophe unravelling all around us right now. And we need to act immediately or else it will be too late.